Our story today starts with Henry Descrage, a sports journalist for the bi-monthly sports magazine, The Auto, and a biker, and a problem. People weren't buying newspapers anymore. So to promote their magazine and newspaper, they decided to host a cycling tournament that went across 2,428 kilometers and goes across the country from Montaigne and going around the country to finish in Paris. This first race in 1903 only featured six, six stages and only around 60 people took part, with a finishing record of 94 hours, 33 minutes and 14 seconds, and with over 20,000 watching the finishing round. Given the success of the first tournament, Lotto decided to make it an annual event, and thus every year, sometime during July, there will be roughly 23 days where riders from across the world get to participate in one of the most grueling and challenging races. This would prove to have been a success, with over 150 million live views of the competition across Europe during 2021. But what makes the race so challenging? In 1910, there were suggestions on including more difficult portions and climbs during the tournament, and eyes were set on the Col de Tourmalet, one of the highest and most difficult mountain passes in France. There was one problem, however. There were concerns over the possibility of crossing the pass. So Alphonse Staines, one of Henry Descrage's colleagues at La Auto, set out to clear the pass by car to ensure its safety. He managed to hire a driver, Dumport, to accompany him with the ride. After the first 16 kilometers, the car stopped and they had to walk, but the driver only walked 600 meters before turning back, at concerns for Spanish fares. After slipping and falling into an ice cold stream, and eventually being rescued by the search guide sent out by Lato, he sent a telegram to the strange. Cross Tormelay stop. Very good road stop. Perfectly feasible. The first person to cross the Tourmalet was Octave Lapace, and when he finished, he famously looked the organizers in the eye and shouted, You are assassins! This was only the first of many of the difficult climbs that's yet to be featured in the tour. This year, the path of the Tour de France covers 3,404 kilometers and consists of nine parts, three which are flat, another three hilly, and the last three mountains. Races were passed by 40 stage towns, with 12 of that being newly added this year. In total, 2.3 euros will be split among the races taking part, 50,000 to the final winner themselves. On average, the riders consume a total of 126,000 calories and have an average power output of 230 to 250 watts. During the harder climbs, however, some cyclists peak at 600 watts, which is enough power that when I search up on the internet, the first few results are of solar panels and the people living off grid. During these races, the riders are split into teams and they use the technique called drafting, where the more skilled riders at the end will hand back in their peloton and take advantage of the lead biker split stream, which greatly reduces the air resistance falling on the bikers behind, subsequently reducing the power needed for those riders. These more skilled riders would then catch ahead during the mountainous stages, where the main enemy becomes gravity, which affects all the riders equally. I suppose you can say we all are victims of physics. That being said though, there's always a fine line between a skilled player and a cheating player. From drugged sabotagers to being told by a car with a cork in their mouth, to sabotaging the road and setting it up with class shots, to the good old classic steroids. The Tour de France has seen it all. 
In fact, there's an infamous scandal between the competition and the seven-time consecutive champion Lance Armstrong, who was found to have used performance-enhancing drugs. After investigation, it was decided, and all his seven championship titles were revoked. In the end, the Tour de France is not only a successful bike race, but it also left its mark on the modern-day culture, and now, and is now regarded as one of. If not the most famous bike races in the world, it made cycling something usually with casual implicants, a competitive and fierce sport.